So this week we're going to be working on properties of equality. Uh, they are basically rules that we have in math for equations. Um, you guys have really been using properties of equality since you were really little in math. They just didn't call them that. So I want you to think about what you know about equations. We know that equations have the word equa in it, which is like equal. And we use the symbol, the equal sign, to show e equal. And equations have equal signs. Unlike what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we have expressions which don't have equal signs. Let me zoom this out a little bit. So this has equal signs, this does not have equal signs. So 6 plus x equals 9 is an equation, but 6 plus x is an expression. In this one, we would need to know what the value of x is, or we'd have to just leave it like that. But in this one, we can go find what the x is. And I'll bet you guys can look at that and think back. In elementary school, it might have looked like this, where there's a box, and you put a number in there that made that true. And that's what we want to find. Well, we know because this is a simple fact that that's a 3. But let's go back and use the properties of equality to talk about how we find that. So there's a multiplication one, a division one, an addition one, and a subtraction one. So let me erase all of this and just get our 6 plus x equals 9. What we have here is a 6 and we have a 9. Those are like terms. They're just constants. They're just numbers with no variable attached. I could take and subtract this from both sides. Why both sides? We always want to think of an equation like a scale. And if I put something on one side, the same thing has to be on the other side for it to balance. If I put too much on one side, a scale gets tilted and that would show that this is heavier than the other side. Well, that's what these properties of equality are doing. They're keeping that scale balanced while we move things around in the equation to get the information that we need. This is subtraction. <clears throat> so when I look at this list here, it is the subtraction property of equality because I'm using subtraction on both sides of my equation. So I'm using subtraction equally. I'm taking a negative six from both sides 6 minus 6 is going to be 0. That leaves me with x. 9 minus 6 is equal to 3. So some further examples. Let's go ahead and look at the activity that this is either available to you on um, in paper form from the places where you can pick up packets and lunches, or it's available in Google Classroom in an electronic form. So on this side, I'm seeing that 3 is being subtracted from both sides. That means that this is subtraction property of equality. For this one, I have 8 is equal to x minus 3. I can add the same number to both sides to get that. So 8 is equal to x minus 3. I can add a 3 to both sides to get that x by itself. 8 plus 3 is 11, so this would be 11 is equal to x. But because I added, it's the action I'm taking here, this is the addition property. Of equality. Oops, if I can spell, that was really messy. Of equality. So let's look at this next example. <clears throat> this is 3 times x is equal to negative 15. I'm going to use my whiteboard to show that. So I have 3 times x, and I know it's 3 times x because that 3 and that x are smushed together. That's 3x, which means they're being multiplied, is equal to negative 15. To get that x by itself, 
And to find out what x is equal to, I need to divide both sides by 3. And I really want to talk about what's happening here. First of all, going back to our worksheet, I'm dividing. So this is the division property of equality. But what's really happening here is 3 divided by 3 is 1. And you know that any fraction that has the same numerator and denominator is equal to 1. So you'll hear adults or other people trying to help you talk about these cancel, but they don't really cancel. They just turn into an invisible 1. And we would just rewrite that as x with an invisible 1 in front of it. And then we divide this side by 3 as well because we're dividing equally. That's what the property means. If I do it to one side, I do it to the other. Negative 15 divided by positive 3 gives us a negative. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So x is equal to negative 5. Our last example is x divided by 4 is equal to 2 x divided by 4 is equal to 2. Well, if you guys think about this, just puzzle it out. Something divided by 4 gives me 2. That also means that 2 times the 4 would give me this. What you just did there with me is you thought about multiplication as being the opposite of division. This is what it looks like when we do it in math, though. I want to get that x by itself with an invisible 1. And right now, I'm going to rewrite this to the right. I really have 1 fourth times x equals 2. Why? Because the x is on the numerator and the 4 is in the denominator. So what I want to do is I want to multiply by the reciprocal of this 1 fourth. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1. Reciprocal means the opposite in a fraction. And in this case, I'm going to multiply this times 4 over 1 and this times 4 over 1. Let's break down what happens when we do that. 4 times x is 4x. 1 times 4 is 4. Is equal to 2 times 4 is 8 over 1. Well, we're going to have some invisibles here, because what is 4 over 4 equal to? Sorry, you can probably hear my dog. <laughs> 4 over 4 is equal to 1. That becomes invisible 1, leaving us with just x. 8 is over 1. 8 divided by 1 is just 8, so we can also make that one invisible, and our x is equal to 8. So going back to your notes... If I'm multiplying this to get the answer, remember x divided by 4 is equal to 2, we multiply by the reciprocal, and we end up with x is equal to 8. That's using multiplication property of equality to find out what our variable is worth. I'm going to post in Google Classroom along with this video. You'll also see a Quizlet. This assignment is going to be in the assignment section of Google Classroom, and that is the work for our week. So I want you to use the four properties to solve these eight problems. I'll post the answers to those on Friday. And also see if you can use this information to fill in the blanks here. Okay, you will notice that our answers for the week before are here, although there are also poster, pictures of those in Google Classroom from last week. And there's some family math puzzles for the week. So let me know if you have any questions.